Right, hello. Today, we're going to do a little review of the Carry More Saber Rack set because I think everyone knows what they are. Um, but it's just more of a video on my content and the modular system that I make and um, how I use it and how I pack it. Now, I've used the, the, the Sabre 45 for this one uh, because it's not a big pack, so it's 45 litres on the internal side with these external pockets. Um, and I've got this set up as a winter setup using my modular system. So it's a great way to show from a small pack how you can have a winter setup and how much the modular system helps in maximising the space of your rucksack. So what we'll do, we'll go through it. Um, starting from the outside and we work our way in. Um, so hey, let's go. Obviously axe at the front, obviously you don't have to use a big axe like this, this is the Grand Cross Brux small forest axe and works really well with these little hook and buckle things where the axe can just sit there. So there's the Grand Cross Brux axe, so we, we have that on the front. Now with the modular system I've got these pouches that I've designed to fit in the side of these pockets. One of them I've got over there I'll go and get in a second, but basically to maximise these pockets I design these pouches that fit inside. So we'll empty all them out. So these are the pouches and let's see if I can get a good zoom in them. I'm using it, I'm making a load of um, products using this. Uh, mesh material. I think I'm going to do the whole complete range. It's just nice to have, if you're a bit worried about having things that are the same, like too many of them, which if you want to know what's inside them, generally what you could do is put different colour paracord or whatnot on them, but I'll generally just keep them as they are and I know what's inside them. Or, this is going to be another option, a mesh pouch, and obviously I'll make this material in the brown and the black uh, and the camo. But, they fit lovely in the side there. And fill up that spot nicely. So basically what you got rid of them is these pouches would be inside your pack and you've had to condense them to the size of this pouch. So I'll, you'd have your brew kit, this is what I personally I use your brew kit, a possibles kit, you have your toilet trees and then you have a fire kit and that's taken up on them side pouches. So yeah, so these are the four pouches. So we're just putting these to one side for the moment. So in the bottom, I keep my water, two litres of water, one litre either side. Um, in this one, I've got my Nalgene uh, bottle from the uh, Mesh Relate Spirits. I've got the, the Transgear Burner in the Transgear Burner pouch. And yet again, um, I'm trying out this uh, mesh material to use as for keeping one, my one litre water bottle in there. Plus, this is the Boundless Voltage 900ml uh, cup. Um, but even, like you can see, it's all dirty and suited up, and that's what's the beauty of having um, one of these pouches for it. And it, can, it contains it all together with the lid. Um, and it fits lovely in it. So basically, very simple, just chuck it in there. You can even hook it onto this side. So that's on that side. On the other side, keep the heavy cover canteen kit um, in a max position pouch. Lids in the front there. But oh, I can hook it on to my rock, sort of a, my pocket if I wanted to, because it's got the uh, all answer some webbing, um, and that fits nicely in there. Okay. Gloves on the front. Swing it round. Top lid. Yeah, again, mucking around with these pouches. Now this pouch are the low medium pouches and there yet again this one seems to work really well um, for keeping the neck scarf, um, a wool hat, gloves, 
all in there quite nicely, easy to get out, easy to grab from the top. So I've got, say, my neck scarf, hat, gloves, and waterproof trousers, all in one of them. So, and that's the mesh version, uh, the mesh, and this is like sort of the normal, normal version that I do. Okay, let's get into the uh, pack itself. On the top here, I've got a one tigress ground sheet, very lightweight, um, not a lot of money. Next up, what you'll have is a tarp. And over the last three, four years, mainly use the DD super light tarps, I think they're superb, lightweight, you crunch them into your bag, they can compress really small, I've got the 3x3 and the 4x4.5 four I think it is, something like that, 4x4.5 four four I use for more winter camps, 3x3 uh, three three for summer or even day camps, love them to bits, super tough, they're expensive but they're quality and I'm not a big DD Love, I don't like a lot of their tarps. I've had the, the normal tarps, I know people like them. I don't really get on with them. I've had about three over the years, and I'll normally get about a year and a half, two out of it. Then they end up ripping up, uh, split straight down the center. So I'm not a big lover, but the, the super light material I really do like, and that puts me straight onto the actual shelter. So there's, there's, the, there's the tarp, there's the tent pegs, and here is the DD Super Light Tent, I think it's called, it's like a one man tent. It's really lightweight, I think these two combinations together, don't quote me on this, but I think it's under one kilo, both of these together, could be wrong, but I know it's pretty light, I think that's about 450 grams or something like that, so it's about the same for that, but I, I'll have to weigh it. Um, but I really like these two combinations, Easy to set up, quick, you've got a good admin area, I'm six foot three and I've got space in this um, and it works really well. So that's my shelter and there's the pegs, we'll go with that. Another new item that I've recently purchased, um, I've had the UCO candles in the past, don't get on with them, too much hassle, too much of a pain, uh, it's cleaning up, very expensive on the candle front. So. I've gone for another UCO product, which is their tea light. Which is a lot simpler product to use. Basically, open it up, put your tea light in there, and you can actually store about four in here at one go. Put that on, bang, you're done. You get a good, I don't know how many hours out of these. I bought a load of citronella ones dirt cheap to, to, to run, very small and there's no messing around with them so I like them and the citronella one's great for uh, keeping the bugs away and I've got two of them uh, yeah, so I've got two and these are the mesh, they come with these bags next up the food bag uh, it's normally a bit bigger than this but I've been using it um, this is the roll top bag I make. You don't have to use it as a food bag, but I like it because I've sort of designed it in a way that the bottom, you can put ration packs, microwave rice, all that sort of stuff in the bottom there. Um, very, very tough. Got quite a lot of space in there. Velcro top with buckles. Um, and, uh, obviously as you eat the food, you can roll it up more and more. It's up to you how tight you do it, but food bag. My cook kit. Now this is a new product I bought, and um, I've just made one of these mesh pouches, which I will make as well. And in here, I've got a new bounder for each titanium pot. I think it's 1100 mils. <coughs> so 
So you've got the lid, which also can double up in a frying pan if you want to. Maybe a couple of bits of bacon and a meat or something. <coughs> and the pot itself. And I think it is like a, uh, a 1080. Now I like boundless for stuff and I've been using it for years and it's cheap. Like I think Amazon, I bought this at the time, I think it was £24 a couple of weeks ago, delivered. Uh, that's big enough to do what you want. And the stove I keep in here is the um, little bug stove. So if you look at it, that's a nice lightweight combination. And all I do with it, stick that there. That goes wrapped in there. And then goes in the bag. So that works really well. Really lightweight. Um, I also like to keep a frying pan. You don't need it, you could actually just use that. But for me, I use this lightweight titanium pan. I've only recently picked up. Um, didn't buy it new, second hand. And this is one of the Swedish um, frying pan pouches I make. But yeah, it's just, I picked it second hand. Never new titanium pan. I like it because it's quite deep. Um, and it's a good lightweight cook kit, that. With the pot and the, the water bottles. Um, I don't need to have like the pot with, with the water bottles, but the titanium, they don't weigh much. And if you're out with other people, it's nice to have that extra cup. The back up. So that's my frying pan. So that's the top half of the bag. It's clear. Very simple, just a toilet kit. You never know when you need it. You want it to, you want quick, quick act. Quick, right, yes, toilet kit. Um, you want it at the top of your pack, quick access, you never know when you're gonna need it. Yeah, again, trying these mesh bags again. They work really well with my zip pouches I'd make. So I'll make them in the Kedora, in the brown, the green, and the black, and the camo I've got at the moment. Um, and this is the, gonna be the new mesh, so. Just grab it, it needs to go, job to good one. So that's, that's that. Now I use, um, yeah again, these are, these are pouches are designed to fit with all together with the complete system, so they all stack on top of each other. These are the long, large pouches I've got. Yeah, again, trying out the mesh material. In this one, I've got a down jacket. So I've got that extra warm layer of down, especially for in the mornings. Um, so I've got that in there. In this one, I keep a, a Ventile jacket, a lightweight waterproof Ventile jacket. This is one I made myself, and that fits in there. So I've got a waterproof layer, a down warm layer. Um, so they go in there quite nicely, and they fit in the pack like that. Below that, I've got my long, large, this is the large uh, box pouch. And in here I have all the thermals, um, I've got another jacket in there, like a lightweight down jacket, thermal leggings, thermal top, socks, pants, all them sorts of things. Um, I even have in here this, which is one of them uh, Thermarest pillows. So when I have a shelter, I fill that up with a down jacket and a couple of other bits, cinch it up, put myself a pillow. That stays in there. So that's like a complete warm layer. Um, so the complex got a waterproof top, waterproof leggings. If I was in a situation where I got completely drenched, I'd have a complete set of clothes. Yes, I wouldn't have trousers, but I'd have waterproof trousers. I'd have leggings, so I'd put the leggings on, put the waterproof trousers on. I'd put the clean, dry uh, thermal tops on here, socks, um, pants even, and then You've got your jacket and your top layer to for that, and hat and glove and all that sort of things. They're all there, so I'm covering all bases because this is a winter setup. And the way it works, that fits on the bottom. They fit on top. That's how the system starts building up inside your pack. Right. 
next thing, obviously we need a sleep mat. Just got a Thermo S Neo Air. Good pack, good mat. Ground sheet down, this on top. We've got the DD Super Light tarp, and that is safe. Lighter than a bivy bag. Bigger than a bivy bag. Um, and you've got space to move around in there. And then you've got the DD Super Light tarp. So it's a light, light weight. This you can call this a lightweight bushcraft setup. Um, and it will say it's all in this 45 litre pack. Let me just move this that around a bit, the sun's coming through. So, so there's my, there's my mat. Next up to that, obviously, sleeping bag. And this is the sleeping bag, which is a RAB 700 Ascent bag. And I've had it for years. Uh, go through the year using this pack and this sleeping bag. You would obviously, in cold, cold, I'm sort of minus conditions, um, I'd put all the thermals on and stuff like that inside this pack, zip it right up, and it'd be good to go. And that is mostly the biggest item, is your sleeping, your sleeping bag. Okay, um, the only things I ain't got is the knife and saw, which I have got on me. Um, in the, I've got a, a really nice, it's, it's Adrian Chiro's knives. Um, knife. Brilliant, brilliant knife. I love it to bits. And I'll put his link down to his Instagram page. Look at his knives. You'd be so impressed with them. And the quality and fit and finish is superb. But even the sheath, it's a nice quality sheath. It's a brilliant knife. Next up, uh, silky saw. Um, this is a small pouch which I'm hoping to be able to make these pouches in time. Uh, but this is uh, the 240. Love it to bits. And um, yes, it'd be great if I, I hopefully can get around to making these little um, bags for them because they're just designed to sort of go over the shoulder. So you can just access it when you need it. And you go from there really. I've got it one way round but you get the gift. Um, is this. Yeah, again, mucking around with these little mesh uh, material. Small little bag I made for it, but basically uh, buying boundless voids again. Just a small insulated cup boundless voyage. And it just hangs on the outside and then when it's winter and it's cold you want that hot rope and you want to keep it that bit warmer because you know when it's cold when it's cold your brew gets cold cold very quickly so i like to have an insulated cup um, and that actually sits on the outside and the reason being for that on my trangia set i have the little triangle things that sit inside it where you can put a pot on top I've done that so I don't want to, if I don't want to go into the pack and get out the, the stove and all the, the brew, you know, the pots and all that. I just want a, a quick brew. That with a windbreak around it is a quick little brew as you're walking along or I just want to stop for a bit um, and you can cook up some noodles on bits and pieces like that. You have a hot drink there and then that 900ml pot is great because you can get a hot drink out of it and do noodles at the same time. Um, so it works really well. So that's that and i think we're just there i think we've done it that's the whole lot laid out um what i'll do i repack it up um i think i've gone through most of the stuff i have i have got another video that i have done on the uh, field pack which is almost identical to this but using a different rucksack different setup uh, but the core of the equipment is still very similar and the same i try and keep all my core of it like the like as you say that you saw the pouches um, the box the clothing the fire kit all the same all the time i can't chop and change so that's like i call the core and then the tarps and the tents and the other bits around it all like you swap and change but yeah so here we go so we've got the rucksack got the gloves sleeping bag then we've got the four pouches which is the fire kit brew kit toilet trees and um, possibles next up we've got my food bag 
DD Superlight 3x3 with the DD uh, tent, um, Thermarest near, near air, got me thermal clothing, um, the big one, and waterproof jacket, and uh, a down jacket. Water bottle, ground sheet, tent pegs, lantern, cordage, um, hat, scarf, gloves, axe, knife, saw, uh, insulated cup, athletic spirits, one litre water bottle with 900ml cup, frying pan, billy can, and also the transier burner, and a toilet kit. And that's my complete loadout. So what I'll do now, I'll pack it all up. Okay, let's pack this up. First off, sleeping bag. I like to get the air out of this. It's got a little valve system. So we put that in first. The mat goes in right at the bottom with that clothes bag. Then what I like to do with the frying pans is put it right down the front there. So it keeps it all nice. Food bag, really can, goes in there quite nicely as well. Shelter, fits in there, lovely jubbly, top, goes in there. And for the moment, because he's a, I like keep him a sort of, don't want him getting damaged or broken glass, which I don't think they will, but I'll just keep him on the top there, in a little, there, what fills out that little, little space there. So, that's that done, internals. Set up. Ground mat goes in there. Sits that up in the lid. Inside pocket. Goes in there, lovely. Now, what I will do, just so I won't put them too much, but put them in there loose. Back here, and we'll put hat, scarf, and gloves, and some cordage in the top there. Next up, water. as best as possible. So, This side, the mesh one, I keep at the back, and this is my toilet trees. So I know that's there. Fire kit. Goes there. Here 
again, this mesh one, which is my brew kit, I'm going to chuck in the back. There. In the front there. And not the fire kit, because I'm simply going to have the brew. I need the fire kit. And go there. And so all these can be sort of cinched up. And put it all in. Um, the saw just goes in this little, there's a little side pocket there, an axe, not that axe with knife. Um, I've got these little, great little things where you just hook them in like that. Don't need to put that one on, don't really need it. Then from here, that's when I fit underneath there. And then up there, I can sort of cinch it all down. And the only other thing I keep on the outside, I've got a carabiner here. I just flip that on there, which and other things I can put on there as well. Um, Stop it flapping around. And I think that's about it. Just going to cinch it all up. So, that is, it ain't too heavy. That is a winter setup um, using the Camera Sable 45 with a modular system. And you can see there's everything there for more than enough there uh, to have a good night. The only thing extra you would take would be. Um, a bit more food in the food bag. I've got sort of all bears essentials. I've got about four uh, RV ration packs. I've got mash. I've got um, dehydrated meals in there, um, and a few other bits and pieces. I think you've got a tin of beans and things like that, and uh, extra brew kit stuff. But you could take in a bit more. It's not like I've got. A, I couldn't do a you know a week's worth of food in there, but um, you know, I'll, I'll take a bigger pack. But for two nights or three even I've got plenty to go on with the only other thing I would have would be uh, water purification on me and that's when I might bring the growl along if I knew I needed to bring it I'll bring the growl along but I normally hit, hit, put that to hook it onto the side here um, which you know is you can you drink on the go and get collected water so I hope that was alright for you um, I hope it was interesting um, uh, say so all the pouches if you're interested there'll be a link in the Etsy, my Etsy there's a link to the Etsy store below uh, you can have a look at it. the mesh stuff's not available yet uh, but hopefully it will be soon uh, but the stuff I make the, the material I make is all 1000D nylon uh, material high end quality material no, no polyester cheap crap it is quality the zips and the buckles all are superb I've been using them for two years and they, they never fail, never let me down. So, and I, I make all the, the stuff myself. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on another video.